Well, thanks, Ben. Uh, thanks to IGF and also to CSIS for hosting us here. Um, I don't see why I should have to go first because you skipped over me. That seems like you're actually adding additional cost to me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I won't go through too much of the history of what's happened over the last few years uh, in the tech ecosystem space because I think there's a lot more people up here uh, who have been much more engaged in this debate and I think they're in a better position to go over that. So instead I'll just start with why IBM uh, came out with this position and I will address your question with regards to uh, whether or not this is just us trying to get the better of our competitors, quote unquote. Um, you know, fast forward, it's not. <laughs> um, so this is not an idea the reasonable care standard that uh, Ben read off to you is not actually an idea that gestated with IBM. This is an idea that was originally floated, I believe, back in 2017 by Professor Danielle Citrone, who's now at Boston University Law School, uh, and Ben Wittes, who I'm sure for the DC folks in the room needs no introduction, uh, but editor of Lawfare blog. Um, and this was largely built this largely built off a lot of the work that uh, Professor Citrone had done on kind of cyberbullying and hate crimes online, so there was a free speech angle to it. Um, IBM decided to embrace this perspective because we are actually looking at this through the lens of strictly illegal content online. Uh, and I'd like to explain a little bit why it is we decided to jump into this debate. So over the last two years or so, basically since uh, Professor Citrone and Mr. Wittes wrote this article, uh, as we're all aware, there's been a developing tech clash. Um, a lot of this vitriol and a lot of this rhetoric has been aimed at the consumer-facing digital platforms, uh, but some of the companies that have been essentially turned into collateral damage in this fight um, are not in that position in the digital ecosystem. So as Ben said, IBM is primarily a cloud hosting and storage provider. So we most of our business is business to business um, and contracts for hosting uh, content uh, that is not readily accessible to the public. Um, nonetheless, over the last year, year and a half, we've seen the proliferation of a lot of rules, regulation, and legislation around the world, uh, because IBM is active in over 175 countries around the world, uh, in which there is no distinction being made between consumer-facing platforms that actually have the technical capability to do more targeted content moderation and removal, and companies that are further down the infrastructure stack in the digital economy. Uh, so I won't name any particular pieces of legislation, um, but ISPs as well as uh, cloud storage providers are increasingly getting roped up into this debate, uh, whether we like it or not. And one of our concerns and the reason that we've sort of advanced this policy proposal is as we've seen the 230 debate in the United States of the last few years, there hasn't been much of a development. And so what has been lacking is a compromise oriented middle here. Um, there is a very strong voice in support of not changing 230 uh, and there is a very strong voice you know, supporting it as kind of the the law that created the internet, as uh, I think Jeff coined. Um, but there really isn't a voice talking about what specific changes to 230 uh, should occur, what specific amendments we should be making looking forward. And our concern is forward that legislators may not view the distinction between the different levels of the digital economy with the same kind of you know, care that that other people would, uh, people in think tank world, uh, you know, people like Jeff who think about this issue very seriously um, and very thoughtfully. Um, so our goal here is primarily to open up the space in that moderate middle to try to achieve some sort of compromise so that we don't see some of the rush to knee-jerk reactionary proposals that we've seen in other quarters in the world.